Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at numerical integration techniques. Now, these are very useful and important techniques for us as chemical engineers when solving often complex arithmetic problems, most noticeably in reactor design. Now, this is the first video in our October uh, competition. So the question for you to enter a £500 every month uh, for a year giveaway will be given at the end of this video. So be sure to watch all the way through till the end. So the first question is, what is numerical integration? Well, numerical integration is a main application of integration that will allow us to find the area under a curve. Now, this can be done in several different ways, and it depends on the information that is available to us. So the first is just standard integration. So that would be whereby we define the two limits and we just integrate the equation as it stands. Now, that would be things like this. So we would define our A, we would define our B, and then we would integrate between uh, these points, and that would give us our area. Now we can also employ the trapezoidal rule, which is the first numerical integration technique. And we can also use the Simpsons rule. Now we're going to look at examples of each and how we would actually go about applying the different equations. So the trapezoidal rule essentially aims to split the area under the curve into equal sized rectangles. Now the clue here or a key parameter is equal sized. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Now it aims to match the slope of the curve and we can use the area of each strip in order to determine the total area under the curve. So a system would look something like this. So we can clearly see that each one of these rectangles has a um, distance of say x. Now this distance of x is exactly the same for every single rectangle. Now, with numerical integration techniques, both the trapezoidal rule and the Simpsons rule do come with an element of error. Because, as we can see here, there is some undershoot and some overshoot between our rectangles and the actual curve of our system. So here, when we find the area of this rectangle, we don't account for this empty space here. So this is actually an error. And similarly with this, now these are undershoots, whereas at this point it actually overlaps and it overshoots the equation. Now if we were incredibly lucky, these values would cancel each other out and we would get a very accurate value. But more often than not, this isn't the case. So with numerical integration techniques, there is an inherent error and it's due to this fact. Now the formula for the trapezoidal rule, it looks fairly complicated on the face of it, but in reality, it's actually very straightforward. So the first term here is the delta x. Now delta x simply means the distance of one strip. So this here would be given by delta x. And that's why we want to make each one of these strips the same size. Otherwise, this equation, we would have to duplicate it several different times in order to account for the different areas. Now, these terms, so the y0 and the yn, these are the initial and the final values of y for our given system. So that would be at this point here is the initial and this point here is the end. That is if we're going in that direction. Now here, this part is we add up all the internal points, so that would be from here, 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 and so forth. We add all them up and we multiply it by two. Then we collect all of this and we multiply by delta x divided by two. And that will give us the total area between this curve. Now let's see how we would actually go about using this rule. So we want to estimate, now again, this is key. It doesn't ask us to determine, it asks us to estimate. Because with these rules, you have um, some form of error. So we can't actually give the definite answer. 
Now we want to use four strips, so that means we're going to have four different rectangles um, of the equation of the integral between 0 and 0 0.8 of e to the power minus x squared dx. Now the first thing that we need to do is determine the thickness of our rectangles, or our delta x. Now all we have to do in this case is we say what is the total distance of our um, points. So say we had something like this, then what we would know is from this point here to say this point here, which was 0 0.8, then that's going to be the total distance. Now what we then say is, well, how many strips are we going to have? Well, in this case, we're going to have four. So we would do something like that. So all we need to do is apply this very simple formula for delta x. So we take the top limit minus the bottom limit divided by the number of strips. So that will tell us that our delta x for this system is 0 0.2. So that should be your very first go-to thing that you find for both the Simpsons rule and the trapezoidal rule. Now we need to determine the values of y, because y is the thing that was featuring in both equations. Now we need to know the values of y that correspond to each strip because we can do this since we know the values of x. Now, what we have here is, because we have four strips, then our n value is our arbitrary uh, constant values that we say, well, this is the beginning of our system. So imagine we had something like this, and we had um, break it up into four. Then this bit here is zero, this is one, this is two, three, and four, okay, and so forth, right? Because we have one strip, two, three, four. So that's what these points mean. Now we know at this point, x is zero. Then we move 0 0.2, then we move another 0 0.2, becomes 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So that's how we derive these parts. And once we know what these are, we just input them into this equation. So we would substitute in, say, 0 0.2 for x here. We would perform the calculation and we get 0 0.9608. And we would just substitute in each of these values of x into this equation and we get these values. Now, these are the values that we're going to use in our numerical integration formula. So if we bring back the formula, then all we have to do is we say, well, y naught is the initial. So that's this point here. Yn is the final. So that's this point here. So we can clearly see this. We know delta x was 0 0.2. Now we just add up the sum of all the internal points. So that would be these three. So we can clearly see that they are here. And then we just add these together, multiply it by two, bring this together. And it's just a case of number crunching. We pop it in and we get the total area is 0 0.655 units squared. Now, we weren't given any units, so like centimetres or metres, so we can't say, you know, it's metres squared. But what we can do is we can just state that whatever these units may be, it's going to be to the power 2. So if we give it some context, then we could replace the units with, say, metres squared. Now, if we look at the Simpsons rule, the Simpsons rule aims to use a quadratic curve to approximate the function within each strip. So rather than the, the rectangles trying to match the, the equation, what we do is we try and employ a quadratic curve that aims to engulf the f of x function. Now, the Simpsons rule quadratic function is this green line here. Now, in this system, you can clearly see there is a lot of inherent risk or error, not risk. And that would be these overshoots and undershoots. Now this doesn't mean that the Simpsons rule is any lower, less accurate than the trapezoidal rule. This is just a pictorial representation. The actual given systems will vary significantly. Now there is a condition here with the Simpsons rule, and it's that you must use an even number of strips when using the Simpsons rule. Whereas the trapezoidal rule, you can use both odd and even number of strips. 
So say for example, a question said, use a suitable numerical integration technique by using five strips. Then that means that we could not use Simpson's rule. We would have to use the trapezoidal rule. Whereas if we were, say, given to use eight strips, then we could have our selection of either or. So that's the one condition that you must have when considering the Simpson's rule. Now, the formula for the Simpson's rule looks slightly more complicated, but there is one way that we can express it using formal nomenclature. But then we have another simplified um, method whereby we can just group the terms and explain what they are. Now, the latter is probably easier for those of you that aren't really familiar with the Simpson's rule. But the, the more formal nomenclature is given by this equation here. So we have still our delta x, but this time it's divided by 3. So the, the formula for delta x is exactly the same. Now, this is still the same. So our y0 and our yn, this is the end terms, so the first and the last value. Now, here, instead of having one summation term, we have two. Now, our first is now being multiplied by a factor of four. And we have the y1, y3, and so forth to yn minus one. Then for this uh, summation term, instead of multiplying by four, we multiply by two. And this time, we add up the y2, the y4, and so forth to yn minus two. Now we can summarize this in a more informal way and we can say that the total area is equal to delta x over 3 multiplied by the sum of the end terms, so that's these two, four times the sum of the odd terms, so the odd values of n, so that's the y1, the y3, that would be y5 and so forth. Then two multiplied by the sum of the even terms, so that would be the two, the four, the six and so forth. So you can see that this one is a lot more simpler to, to get your head around how this actually works. Now let's take a look at an example here. So it asks us to estimate. So again, we have this word estimate. We can't determine, but we can estimate the value to three decimal places using six strips, the equation of the integral between 0 and 1.5 of the square root of 1 plus x cubed dx. And we have to use the Simpsons rule. Now, if this was five strips or seven strips, we could not use Simpson's rule. Now, we'll find delta x exactly the same way as before. So we take the total distance divided by the number of strips. So that tells us this time that the, the width of our strips would be 0 0.25. Now, we're going to construct a similar table to the trapezoidal rule with the exception of essentially one column. Now, we still need to determine the, the corresponding value of y since we know the values of x. So our table would look something like this. Now, again, we had six strips, so we expect to have seven arbitrary values of n. Now, our xn values start from zero, and we know the thickness is 0.25. So we just add 0 0.25 every time until we reach our limit of 1.5. Now we just substitute in these values into the equation. So we sub into this equation and we get all these numbers here. Now the difference is I've added in this column and the reason for this is I've coded this so is that we can distinguish between the ends, the odds and the evens. So the red values are the uh, end values. So that's the initial value and the final value. The green four, so the four is the value that we would multiply, and this is going to be, for green, is the odd digits. So this is for one, this is for three, and this is for five. Whereas the blue digits are being multiplied by two in the formula, and these are the even values. So this is the two, and this is the four. Now, don't take into account the six, because this is the end value. So we wouldn't count this as one of the blue digits. If this was to seven, then we couldn't actually use the Simpsons rule because we would have an odd number of strips. Now, all we need to do from this case is we will add up the even values. So this would be, we add up these values. We add up the 
um, the odds, the evens, and the ends. So that's what we get here. Now I'm going to use the informal equation just so that we can, you know, plug in the numbers. So like so, we just pop them in there. We will multiply them by the respective coefficients. We will substitute in our delta x, and that tells us that our total area is 1.9764. Now the question asked to three decimal places. So that means our complete final answer is 1.976 units squared. And that's how you would go about applying the Simpsons rule as well as the trapezoidal rule. Now our competition for October is uh, to win 500 pounds every month for an entire year is all you have to do is answer this simple question. So apply the trapezoidal rule to the same equation that we did in the Simpsons rule example. So that's this equation here. So if you apply the trapezoidal rule, and all you have to do is comment your answer to this video. So to enter the competition, you must comment your answer to the video, like and subscribe to the channel, and then make sure that you are also subscribed to our Facebook page, because that's where the winner will be announced on the 5th of November. Now our competition ends on the 31st of October and any subsequent videos that are uploaded in October will all count towards the draw. So that's the end of this video, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the idea on how to solve numerical integration techniques. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.